We're being asked here to calculate relative frequency, and to do that, you work out, you take your frequency and you divide it by the total amount. It, it tells you the proportion, essentially, that's what's going on. So if we take the one that's already been done, it's 57 divided by 300, which gives us 0.19. So we need to do that for all the other ones. So we get 0.14. Not point not nine, not point two, not point one three. And 0.25. Okay, and those would add to give one, because my relative frequency of any of them would be one. It's it's a bit like a probability, but it's from experiment, so we we can't call it the probability because that's a, like a theoretical concept. It's the experimental version of that. So Ling thinks the dice may be biased. What evidence supports this? Um, I'd say. The relative frequencies vary quite a lot because we're if it was to be uh, non-biased, we'd expect them to all be about the same. Um, we'd expect them to be three hundred divided by uh, six, sorry, which is fifty. We'd expect each one to be about fifty or one over six which is 0.16 recurring. And some are, some are quite a lot less and some are quite a lot more. So the relative frequencies differ considerably And some are far from 0 0.16 recurring. That would be for the uh, unexpected, the non-biased ones. But why might it not be biased? Well, we've only done 300 rolls, so it's it's not that much. It's a small sample size. Um, need to roll more, need to do more rolls. Through like natural variation, you can just get that we just happen to get lots of sixes on this occasion. Um, that's just how kind of chance works.